I'm here in Harrogate for the 10th Bespoked Handmade Bicycle Show. This is a show where, well, as the name suggests, there's lots of bespoke bikes and things that have been handcrafted, things that bicycle manufacturers have poured their hearts and soul into. There's lots of cool stuff in here. I can't wait to show you, so let's go in. I'm over on the Hope stand and there's something that I am incredibly excited to see because I've just never seen one before. You may be familiar with the Hope Lotus HBT track bike that was top of the medals table in Tokyo, but this is a road going time trial version of the same bike and it's a prototype and it's one of only two in the world. This one was actually ridden by Ethan Vernon at the under 23 world championships and well, it's quite different. It's cool to see quite a lot of modifications on it to turn it into a road going bike. So you've got the derailleurs on there. You've also got disc brakes front and rear. And there's some other changes too. So if you look at the dropouts, they've been completely redesigned and, uh, and, and developed and machined on this. And the front dropout for the disc brake caliper is particularly cool because they've got a prototype caliper. Hope obviously makes brake calipers itself. This is a prototype one that's designed to seamlessly and, and very flushly sit in line with that custom dropout. And then the cable, it's miraculous, comes through the bar here and then down this incredibly narrow fork and then just sits into the caliper. It's all very neat, very aero. It's well, really cool. Another thing that stands out is how narrow the base bar is. Narrower, more aero. You're not in the base bar much on a time trial bike, so it makes sense. But it's about 28 centimeters, which, yeah, seriously narrow. I wish I had one that narrow on my bike. But it's adjustable because it's a modular construction of the base bar. The center bit stays the same, but then these side bits with the, the grip on, they can actually be adjusted and well, customized and made to the specification and the width that you want. And then they just bolt in on the sides. Another big change from the track bike is if you look on uh, the track bike, and there's actually one over there, that's Jason Kenny's spare practice bike before he went over to Tokyo, uh, is the track bike has a 3D printed lug section at the back onto which the seat stays attach. Hope's done away with that on this Road TT bike and actually made it into a carbon section, which they say helps make it more cost effective, lighter and stiffer. But although they are trying to make it more cost effective to produce, don't get too excited. You're probably not going to see one in your local bike shop because it still remains an incredibly expensive bike to produce. And a large part of that is down to the carbon that's used in the design, which my guys at Hope tell me is the most expensive and highest quality pre-preg carbon that Torre makes. It results in an incredibly stiff bike, but one that is going to be prohibitively expensive and only available to well, a very, very narrow specialist market. You know, I mentioned Jason Kenny's track, well, spare bike earlier. You're just looking at this, it's the first time I've seen one in real life. You just wouldn't believe how narrow the handlebars are. They are outrageous. They're like, they're like 20 centimeters wide. I mean, he looks like Donkey Kong when he's riding it from Mario Kart. It's ridiculous. Another cool detail about Kenny's bike is it's got a custom saddle on. I'm informed that a lot of the riders in the British cycling team have custom saddles made by Simmons Racing. He's the guy that's also responsible for the one piece molded custom carbon shoes that a lot of the riders use that you may have seen us talk about on the channel before. But you can see the Simmons Racing logo underneath this very light carbon saddle. And now for something completely different from a company called Maison Tamboit. Now, this is a company that has its origins as far back as 1912, and the name Tamboit actually comes from a racer from that period. But these are luxury, well, luxury kind of urban bicycles. It's a French brand. And I mean, this, this bike is, it's absolutely magnificent. So it has DI2 on it, and it's got these bespoke DI2 uh, buttons on the handlebar here that are beautifully integrated on these chromed buttons and they uh, change gear on an 11 speed Alphine Shimano Di2 hub at the back and it's just beautiful it's very functional but just a very sort of couture nice design and other features on it are you can sort of customize the aesthetic of the bike so 
These are actually fabric covers that go on the tubes that can be removed and tailored to your preference. So if I remove them, you can see the nice white tubes underneath. It's all very nice, you've got a beautiful leather saddle. These rims here are actually beechwood, just to give a really nice aesthetic, but underneath it's like a composite structure with a carbon core in the middle to make sure that it is still strong and light. And then for just added urban functionality, you've got a Gates carbon drive for minimal maintenance. And just all around, the attention to detail is just it's very nice. I mean, chrome everywhere, these beautiful leather uh, cable covers and the cables are nicely integrated and under here they've put a really neat really nicely made uh, USB charging port for the DI2 system very nice but if you're wondering how much it costs well it's one of those if you have to ask kind of prices I'm over on the Pacenti wheel stand and I've come across this custom steel crossly metal bike. It's got some very interesting design ideas on it I'm going to share with you. So first is the fork, it's a monoblade design, sort of a homage to a Cannondale lefty and it just looks incredible, especially with this massive custom head tube with huge bearings in it. It's a very sort of impressive looking thing. Also this is an aerofoil section on this single fork blade too. But another thing that's in common with a Cannondale bike is, well, in something that's in common with the Cannondale Topstone, is that the rear wheel alignment is offset by 12 millimeters. And this is a feature that is found on the Cannondale Topstone. The reason for this is it allows you to dish the rear wheel rim centrally over the rear wheel axle, which means you can have even spoke tension on both the drive side and the non-drive side spokes. Now, Pacenti is making a, a big deal of this and saying that that's a really important design feature because with bigger tyres, and especially tubeless tyres, they have a tendency, according to Pacenti, to actually change the spoke tension of your wheel when you mount the tubeless tyre and pump it up. And this can cause greater problems when you have uneven spoke tension to begin with on the non-drive side and the drive side because that wheel rim is off-centred. So they're trying to eliminate that problem. But yeah, very, very interesting idea. This is a cross-country mountain bike, but don't adjust your sets because it's from Quirk Cycles, a small independent frame builder in London that also makes a lot of gravel bikes. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is because it has just a stunning attention to detail throughout the bike in terms of customization. And this is then applied onto the other bikes that Quirk makes. So look at this, well, look at the chain set here. It's actually a SRAM GX chain set. 10 Oliver points if you spotted that, but it's been customized. The surface finish has been stripped back and then it's been anodized in this really cool metallic green. And then this is, you know, continued throughout the bike. So you've got the levers, they've been anodized too, matching cables that come out. And then even this Envy, this Envy uh, seat post here, the logo has been removed and then it's been replaced with a custom anodized one and on the clamping bolt mechanism as well, even down to like the little valve covers here on the wheels, they're anodized. And then when we get onto the rear mech, it's brilliant. So it's actually a combination of different SRAM components. That's a SRAM force lever there. And this part is the GX mech. And then it's got a custom cage fitted onto it with oversized pulley wheels for added bling. But the reason why it's a force arm here is because the GX one can't be anodized. It's not, uh, it has a different surface finish on which doesn't take the anodizing so it's a combination of the two uh, different components that are then compatible with each other and swap together. Oh and it's got a gold chain as well so I'm going to uh, guess I just fist pump myself and uh, if you're wondering what the bike's called it's uh, this particular model cross-country mountain bike it's called the Super Chuck um, which I'm reliably informed you shouldn't look up on urbandictionary.com This is the Silver Eagle. Now you may remember this bike because last time I was at the Bespoke Show, I met Neil Campbell who was planning to ride this bike in the hope of breaking the land speed record behind a slipstream. Now since then, he's achieved that goal and this blows my mind. He rode a speed of 174 miles an hour. 
Now that's still technically slower than the fastest ever woman, but he's the fastest male. And the woman's record is 184 miles per hour, but 174 miles per hour, incredibly. Did it at Elvington Airfield in uh, August 2019. And well, consequently, the bike now has some battle scars. So going that speed puts enormous stress on the tires. There's actually like melted tar from the Elvington runway on the sides of the tires. And this the surface of the tires. They're just really damaged and worn away. And then I'm also told that when they were doing the record attempt, the way that the fairing on the car that they were following, which was a Porsche KM, was designed was that it would actually give an aerodynamic boost with a vortex at around 150 miles an hour. That worked, that aerodynamic vortex, and the way the air swirled behind the fairing kicked in, and that surged Neil forwards at 150 miles an hour, which then caused this huge dent as he piled into the back of the, the vehicle he was following, the Porsche KN. And there's a dent here in this huge thick steel tube. That nearly caused him to fall off and potentially die. Thankfully he didn't, but he was sick inside his helmet, I'm told. Astonishingly, managed to stay upright and carry on going up to 174 miles an hour and break the record. But, I mean, it just blows my mind. I, it would be absolutely petrifying to attempt that. But what an incredible piece of engineering. And Neil's actually looking to uh, attempt the record again and hopefully break it and go, well, perhaps 200 miles an hour. And in order to do that, they're going to need a car to follow. So if you happen to own a really fast estate car, uh, something like an Audi RS6 or a, well, um, a Porsche Panamera Turbo, then, um, well, get in contact in the comments section below and you could be part of history. I'm over on the restrap stand and they've got some very nice new bike packing bags that they've made as a collaboration with Look. Now for those of you unfamiliar, Restrap is a uh, Yorkshire based brand that's been going from strength to strength and their bags are handmade in Leeds and actually when you get one, it's, uh, well it, it says on it who it was made by. This one is, uh, was made by Pamela. There you go. Anyhow, these new bike packing bags, what makes them really nice is the special fabric that's used on them which is highly reflective in this kind of like iridescent fashion. I filmed it on my phone to show you, which you can see now with the torch enabled, so it's pinging straight back. And it just you know, it lights up just in so many colors and makes you highly visible to motorists when their headlights are reflected back at them. There's three bags on offer. So there's a seat post bag, a top tube race bag. And if you're one of the trendy cool kids, you'll probably have one of these already, but a canister bar bag too. It's very nice. All the cool kids use those on there. I don't have one. So you've got a beautiful retro frame or a nice steel framed bike. One of the issues you might have is putting a chain set on it from one of the modern big group set brands and then it looking kind of a bit sleek and modern and not quite fitting the aesthetic of the bike. Well, a solution could be one of these. These are absolutely beautiful from a company called Chatterley and they're kind of like sort of retro modern chain sets. I mean, look at the aesthetic of this it's absolutely beautiful machined from high quality aluminium and oh, I mean, it's exquisite it's got it's designed for a square taper english threaded bottom bracket as well i can show you here they're doing narrow wide one by ones as well as two by chain rings but it just i mean it just looked absolutely perfect on a nice steel framed custom bike the origins of the company is quite interesting it's a very old brand that was founded by a cyclist called William Chatterley, who actually won the Catford Hill Climb back in the 1800s, the oldest cycling race in the world. And then the brand prospered, but like many cycling brands, it sort of disappeared in the last century as cycling declined. But then the brand has now been resurrected, uh, enjoying the cycling boom in 2017. Look at these pedals as well. I mean, absolutely beautiful for kind of like a retro bike build. But uh, I'll spin those. Oh, so satisfying. I think I love this kind of stuff because it's like uh, with cars and automotive, you see things like the Singer 911, if you've not seen that before, like a modern interpretation using modern manufacturing methods of sort of retro designs and retro tech. But I want to know, what do you guys think? If you had a nice steel frame custom bike, would you like to have sort of this kind of chain set on there or would you opt for a more sort of modern Shimano type design? Let us know in the comments. Also, cool fact, 
Chatterley actually made the undercarriage for the de Havilland Mosquito in World War II. Um, my favourite aeroplane. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the really cool and beautiful things that are here at the Bespoke Bike Show in Harrogate. And let us know in the comments what the favourite thing is that we've shown you so far is. And make sure you subscribe because there's a lot more stuff to show you here. So I'm going to go and make another video and look at some of the beautiful, cool bikes that are on show because there's just so many nice passion projects and things that people have poured their heart and soul into creating. And I just can't wait to show it to you. So, all right, I'm going to go. See you in a bit. Bye.